Next up, this vintage kit by Nito. Well, hey everyone, and welcome to another Initiative Modeler. First of all, I just want to wish all of you well. I know we're right in the midst of this whole coronavirus thing, and it's certainly been a difficult circumstance for all of us, so I hope, hope it resolves soon. Uh, I know my videos can sometimes serve as a nice distraction. Uh, at least that's what I've been told anyway, and hopefully this one does the same for you guys. Uh, this is a vintage model kit that I'm going to be building from Nito. It is called the Rocket Craft Delta III. This is something that I found online about a couple years ago on eBay. I really didn't know much about this, uh, this company or these uh, model kits, uh, but I was actually just drawn to it because of the styling. It's this ni nice uh, retro 1960s, 70s type styling, at least the concept ships that you used to envision using on the moon or on Mars. Uh, the kit was, I believe, released in the early 80s. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what caught my eye. I actually got the kit for under $30. I know that these kits now typically run for anywhere between $90 to $100. Uh, the other thing that this reminded me of was an action figure that we used to play with as a kid called Major Matt Mason. Yeah, this is actual Major Matt Mason action figure that I have in my collection. I found him about 10 years ago on eBay. I uh, got him for a good price. Uh, it was in great condition, and it just brought back a lot of nostalgia for me, so I had to have him in my collection. Uh, but actually what prompted me to build this uh, model kit was the IPMS show that was supposed to happen in Vegas at the end of April uh, called the Best of the West Show. And I was really looking forward to going to that, but unfortunately it has been postponed till September. I'm not sure I'll be able to make it out for it uh, because in September I have a bunch of other things going on. Um, I was hoping to attend the show in place of Wonderfest because uh, I know it's not going to be the same as Wonderfest, but I uh, just wasn't going to be able to make it out to Wonderfest this year. And I certainly hope for the sake of all you guys who are hoping to get there that that show does go on. So uh, hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this bill and seeing what's inside the box. All right, so we've got the instructions here. Sure, just uh, two pages, so it doesn't look very complicated to put together. Uh, what's interesting is that it has a mechanism inside that you can install uh, to make the unit walk, and uh, that's what this is right here. And I'm not going to be doing that uh, because I want it to look. Uh, a bit more realistic and then this would look make it look more like a toy so I'm gonna leave that out and make it a stationary model kit. Let me go ahead and open up these bags now. So this is the top portion of the ship and this is the canopy to the cockpit here and then the cockpit itself just fits right into here. Uh, not very sophisticated, the panels are pretty simple and uh, there's an astronaut figure that goes inside here. Now uh, the model is, um, as I said, comes with that mechanical piece and so it's hollow here to allow that uh, mechanism to fit inside here and for the legs to move, but since I'm not going to be using that, I'm going to cover these with styrene and probably add some greeblies there to fill it in so it doesn't look hollow. Uh, the other thing is that the model is their ship is supposed to have kind of like a siren or a warning light on top and unfortunately the model comes with a solid white piece that you paint red. So obviously you can't light it up that way. So I was trying to think of what to do there, and the first thing I did was to cut a piece of um, clear styrene from an old model tree. Uh, again, I just keep odds and ends in, in a drawer here, and uh, so I fashioned out a piece that is kind of a similar size to the one that comes with the model kit. So that's one way to go. And the other is to use this uh, uh, clear piece that I have here, or at least an orange piece I should say, um, that is a running light from a, a Star Trek model and uh, so I figured I could make the hole bigger and install it and then just put the SMD underneath that. So I think that actually would work pretty well. Uh, I think it looks a little bit better than the other one that I uh, tried to make here. So we'll see. I'll, I'll try those out and see which one seems to look better. Okay, and here we have now the parts to the uh, tanks that go on uh, either side of the ship. We've got the landing gear, and the landing pads as well as the astronaut figure. Uh, this particular piece goes with that mechanism that we won't be using, so we'll set that aside. And here we have the decal sheet that comes with the model. It looks like it's in good shape, so I think I'll be able to use it, but nonetheless I'll scan it uh, just in case we run across any problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is start uh, with the assembly of the tanks and the seams. So let's go ahead and begin.
All right, so here are the two cylinders. I first primed them gray, but I decided to prime them over with white. I think that would help with the yellow. So let's proceed with the yellow paint. And here they are. So what I did was I used uh, this flat yellow from Vallejo. It was a bit too bright. I wanted to warm it up a bit, so I happen to have this hot orange. I just applied just a couple drops of this, so it's probably about a 90-10 mixture, basically. And uh, so I uh, applied a gloss coat. I'm going to let this set for now, and we'll move on to the cabin. All right, well, here we have our cockpit, and it's pretty basic. We've got these uh, here that are supposed to function as instrument panels. Uh, we've got also some uh, designs that are molded into the plastic. They're supposed to look like gauges and buttons, and, you know, you can paint those up. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is go to the computer and see if I can come up with a decal for these panels. And uh, we've got a centerpiece, uh, this rod-like structure that goes here, and then we've got a tank that I painted with the other uh, cylinders there that's going to be placed here. This is our figure. It's only a partial figure. Sometimes I wish that, uh, you know, when you see these types of figures come with models, why can't they just mold a figure and make them complete? But he's got two halves that I've pieced together. We've got some seams to fill in, and my plan is to paint him to look like a Major Matt Mason action figure. And the Mason Matt Major figures came in three different colors. One was white, one had an orange suit, and one had a blue. I think I'll paint him in the orange suit. Uh, so that's the plan for him. So let's go ahead and head over to the computer and uh, see if I can come up with some decals. All right, so we're now at my computer, and what I have pulled up here is Photoshop, the latest version of it, which is on the Creative Cloud. And uh, this decal I'm designing now for this back panel. So I started out by first measuring, of course, a surface area that we have to work with. And I work in millimeters, so this is about 25 millimeters um, uh, horizontal versus uh, 18 millimeters vertical. And uh, so I've created a space here and used some of the uh, moldings that are on here to help me out with designing some of these. And so we have two circular gauges like we have here on our panel and a square gauge here with some buttons and some other miscellaneous things there. So um, I've added some color to the background, which is a gray color there. And I think we're pretty much done with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead now and design one for this panel. So this panel measures 30 by 16 millimeters. Let's go ahead and create that and blow this up a bit. So the nice thing about Photoshop is that you can just use these different tools here to create basic shapes and luckily for us that's all we need to do is create some squares and circles. Once you've created your shape you can outline it with black with this stroke function. Now when you're ready to color the geometric shapes, you can obviously fill it in with a solid color. Or I thought in this case it'd be interesting to just have a gradient appearance, so I'm using this gradient tool to fill it in in this graduated fashion. And my aim here is not of course to give you a whole class on Photoshop, it's just to show you uh, how helpful the program can be to create decals and markings. So I placed our files here now, and I'm going to go ahead and print them out on a piece of paper. Let's see how they match up with our panels. Well, I think our test prints are looking pretty good, and another thought just occurred to me. I intended on printing these on just white decal paper. However, I'm going to go ahead and print them on the vinyl adhesive paper. This is the same stuff I use for the Spock diorama. I'm just thinking that I'm going to be lighting these from behind these colored panels, and I have a feeling the light's going to transmit a little bit better through that vinyl adhesive paper versus the white decal paper. Let me go ahead and print them up, though, and I'll get you caught up here in just a second. All right, so here we now have our panels printed on both uh, vinyl paper as well as white decal paper. So I'm going to experiment with both a little bit here, kind of see which uh, blocks light better. Uh, because this is a thicker paper, I have a feeling we might have better chance with some light blocking here versus the decal paper. So I'll experiment a little bit here, and I'll get back to you in a sec. So these are the decals now on the adhesive paper, and uh, I think they're looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is leave them on here and basically use this as my masking tape. And I'm going to go ahead and take black primer and apply it all over here just to add some light blocking around these panels. And then um, I'll decide which one to go with. I, I, I think I may end up using just these uh, vinyl decals, but we'll see. So another idea occurred to me which is inspired by the way photo etch parts work to light block. What I decided to do now is to double these up. The first decal is going to have the geometric shapes cut out, at least the ones that I want light shining through. So you can see here I'm already applying one to the back panel. And here I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut out another one. 
And then on top of that, I will apply then the fully printed decal, and the hope is that we'll get light shining through the opened areas, much again like a photo etch part works. So this is the light test, just using some SMDs behind them, and we're getting some pretty decent results. So that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so here we have the completed cockpit. Everything is painted, including the figure. I didn't record painting the figure because it was pretty straightforward. I just ended up finding some reference pictures of Sergeant Storm. This is one of the Major Matt Mason action figures, like you see here. And he sports that orange suit, so in this case I use Vallejo's hot orange that I have on hand here, along with the blacks and the uh, white colors to uh, paint his helmet with, and just did my best to replicate the look of the action figure. Now I also wanted to mimic the look of an open face shield on top of his head and what's helpful with this is to me is clear yellow. I use this trick with the Space 1999 figures from the 148 Eagle and it works pretty well. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. So for the light sources I'm going to use some SMD lights here and uh, so for some of the panels that I want to light up like these square ones I'll use an SMD right next to it like a chip size SMD and then for these other ones I think I'll mount like a mega chip uh, behind them. So let's start with this one and uh, the way I'm doing this is just to tape it into position, put down the super glue, let that dry, and then move on. So, uh, the original design uh, uses this mechanical device here, and what you do is you mount the legs um, into the device and hook them through with this piece here. Um, I don't really want to put this in here since this is going to be a static display anyway, and um, I think it's ugly. <laughs> so, I'm going to take this out. And uh, so we have to figure out a way to mount the legs here. So, what I was thinking about was taking some styrene plastic and um, mounting a piece back here and a piece in this forward section. Oops, let me use this one here. And uh, so this will give us a mounting point for each of the legs. And uh, once the legs are mounted in place, uh, say for example, we've got the back set here. It's supposed to go this way. Uh, then we can uh, put the bottom cover over this like so. Now, we're going to have these big openings here. Originally, I intended to cover them completely with plastic, but I do have to allow some room for the legs to poke through. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit. What I might do is, uh, where the leg comes down this way, maybe under this section, I'll, I'll mount yet another bar of styrene just to make it look like there's something there so that it doesn't look completely hollow. Now, obviously, this is not... I wish that they had left that mechanical device out and designed the bottom to look exactly like this because this looks way cooler than this does. But what can you do? That's not the case. Would have been cool because you would have had headlights here and everything and even a rocket engine down at the bottom. So uh, let's go ahead and proceed with these plans and uh, we'll take it from there. And as I was uh, gluing these on here, I realized there's actually a little hole here in the middle of the uh, leg pieces there and uh, this will work real well for the rear because that's where the wires will come through. So I'll mount these here, we'll drill a hole right through there. The wires will feed through here and down the side of the legs. I'm going to try and get them both down one uh, piece here but if uh, I may have to split them so they come together and then down through the display. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully I can get them through. They're, they're pretty thin. Well I'm glad the way this is all working out. I happen to have uh, some tubing here that I was able to place onto the legs and uh, I did it for the front and back even though we only need them for the back uh, rear right leg I think to pass the wires through but I wanted to make sure that they all looked symmetrical so we've got tubes on the front and back it makes the legs look a little beefier anyway so I think that adds a nice touch so I'm going to go ahead and get this painted and primed and then we'll move on to the uh, top part of the cockpit all right, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. We will pick up in part two with finishing the cabin and moving on to the display base. If you have any questions so far, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at intercitymodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in part two. Take care.